Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Here are 8 times the Aston Villa fans were pissed off. Plummeting from 6th to bottom of the league in just 6 years, the Aston Villa side from last season was one of the worst sides in Premier League history, winning just 3 games all season and conceding 76 goals. Throw in a couple of strikers who can't finish, a kid who'd rather get shit faced in Tenerife, oh and don't forget the club captain who left his career back at Man City, and it makes for one pretty appalling squad. Neither Tim Sherwood or Remy Gard stood a chance. Julian Lescott tweeting a picture after getting thumped by Liverpool. There once was a time when Julian Lescott was a half decent player. Um, goes back a while. When he arrived at Aston Villa in the summer of 2015, it was supposed to be the swan song for the lifelong Aston Villa fan. What he ended up doing was making his fellow fans hate his guts due to his insistence on playing football without any passion or heart or basically any desire to win football matches. After being criticised for his shambolic performance against Liverpool, he threw out a tweet of his Mercedes before quickly deleting it and claiming that his pocket tweeted it while he was driving. Does he have a third hand attached to his leg? When you're 1-0 down against your city rivals in a blood and thunder dark, the instructions might be to keep calm, cool and collected. Oh, it's a disaster! It's coming up Enkelman! Alright, so I guess that's where his career went. I was wondering why we never heard from Peter and Eckelman after 2002. Actually, that's a lie. No, no, I wasn't. Imagine having your club captain and loyal servant of 10 years unashamedly flirt with another club right in front of your face for the entire summer. Well, that's exactly what Gareth Barry did in the summer of 2008 when Rafa Benitez inexplicably tried to replace Xavier Lanza with him. Looks a bit ridiculous now if you compare what both players have won. Anyway, despite criticising Martin O'Neill, handing in a transfer request and screaming to anyone who would listen of his desire to play Champions League football, Barry did end up remaining at the club. Bit awkward. Took him six months to get the captain's Iron Man back. Wouldn't take long for him to be off though. Signing for Man City within two days of the 2009 summer transfer window. So he wanted Champions League football. Man City had finished halfway down the league the previous season. Bit odd. Oh, oh. But uh... The constant employment of former Birmingham City managers. Steve Bruce might be settling into the job at Villa Park now, but after winning the streak at the start of this year, Villa fans were getting a bit worried. It brought back haunting memories of Alex McLeish when he moved from the enemy in 2011, masterminding Villa's drop from 9th to 16th in just a year. The Scot was immediately fired after just one season, with the price of therapists having quickly shot up in the Midlands area. Ross McCormick and his inability to jump over gates. Not much more needs to be said on that one. It was a 5 foot gate, you're a grown man, get yourself to training lad. Everybody and their mother could see that Fabian Delph was going to be the next Jack Rodwell at Man City. That's not a good thing. It looked as though Delph himself realised this when he backed out of signing for City in the summer of 2015, pledging his future at Aston Villa and claiming that he couldn't wait to captain them for the next season. A week later he was unveiled as a Man City player. Maybe he celebrates April Fool's Day in July. Or maybe he's just one of these. Probably... Probably the latter. When Aston Villa sunk the final nail in Newcastle's relegation coffin in 2009, albeit thanks to an own goal from Damien Duff, they certainly rubbed it in. The Geordies did not forget that two seasons later, in the Magpies first Premier League game back at St James's Park, when they smashed Villa 6-0. Considering that Aston Villa side win the UEFA Cup and had Ashley Young, Stuart Downing and Marco Brighton, they really shouldn't have been getting smashed 6-0 by James Perch and Co. Anyway, cheers for watching lads. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, give it a share and I'll talk to you in a while.